Hi, this is iOdys Human Dad. We're going to be talking about the Recursive Ordinals Builder today. I'm just giving you a preview of what you'll end up with once you've created your Recursive Ordinals. Uh, you can see here this is the invoice and where to send the Bitcoin to to finalize the inscription. Um, and we'll get to all that as soon as we get through this demo. So when you load the page, you will notice that on the left hand side is a code editor. So as I am typing things on the left, my previews are updating on the right. Now here, I'm showing you how to do simple div tags. Um, you can do any sort of image tags, span tags, uh, really up to you how you want to edit here. And uh, you'll notice the flashing on the right as it auto refreshes. Uh, if you want to take that away, there's a little toggle switch to stop the auto refresh. So I'm going to continue going here. Uh, I, you can see I'm setting up a simple header and a subtitle. I'm trying to change my displays. Um, I'm flexing, which is causing it to be horizontally aligned. But it's starting to look a little weird. So now I'm going to try to redo the width. And that's not quite getting to where I want. So I'm going to drop the flex display and just go with a nice three row uh, HTML file here on the left. So once I have my header and my subtitle, uh, I'm going to start adding a little bit of uh, style to each of these. So making sure that all the text is centered. Um, pretty soon here, we're going to add uh, a centering of the image, which is, uh, is not a text item. So we'll see that that occurs through a flex element um, that is center justified. Um, and I'm also going to, pretty shortly here, make a couple of arrow icons. The goal for this inscription is to essentially have all of the clay tangs in a single inscription and to be able to page through them uh, using the recursive API. So we're going to put a little arrow to the left for our back button. We'll put another little arrow to the right for our forward button, um, and then we'll have kind of the basic structure here. Okay, so once we have the basic structure, we continue on styling. Uh, I want to make sure that all of the items align to the center of the page. Uh, I forgot that that's not marginata, that's justify content center. So I'm going to retype that here. And then you'll see everything shifted to the center of the page. Now, it's good to know that that viewport you're looking at at the right is actually an iframe. So it is going to show you um, a, a, a render just like org.io will render. Certain browsers may have different settings, so I want you to be careful here. It's not guaranteed to be 100% exact, but the actual viewport at right is how org.io or Magic Eden or um, any of the other standard viewers are going to be rendering it as well and how your customers um, or your collectors will see their inscriptions. Okay, so I'm going to start increasing the size here of some stuff, um, make these arrow icons a little more visible. They're obviously meant to be kind of low fidelity, uh, little uh, ASCII icon artwork. Um, I'm going to add uh, a header class so that we can really bold up the tangs. You'll see below it the tangs are never going to sleep. That's the recursive acronym for what TANG stands for. And just to note quickly there that uh, a div tag did appear as red. If a tag appears as red instead of green, that means you have a mismatch. So I just needed to quickly correct uh, the H2 closing tag to match. So, okay, I'm all matched up there. Now I'm going to give it a funky background color. Um, I'm choosing the TANG's blue. Uh, I'm going to make all of the font white to really pop against that in a really high contrast way. 
Um, gray was a little too dark for the subtitle, so let's change that to a much lighter gray. And then we're going to add uh, a little bit of additional styling as well. OK, so now we're ready for the fun part. If you want to add a, uh, a bit of JavaScript, which is something that creates interactivity in your recursive inscription, you're going to need to add what's called a script tag. And the script tag here is just a simple text JavaScript script tag. You're not going to uh, really be using modules here. Um, but this one is going to be uh, a, a pretty quick one where essentially clicking either the left icon or the right icon will go backward or forward respectively. So the first thing we do is we start at uh, index zero, or start, and I'm actually pasting all of the clay tangs in here. Um, this is a pre-baked list of identifiers that I have. You can use um, any identifiers and the naming terminology you want for collections, but I'm going to paste this into our JavaScript. And now the um, recursive inscription we have here not only has access to the current one, the current uh, ID, but all of the IDs. So what I'm going to ask it to do here is to uh, is the, for the recursive inscription on, uh, on click to go back one. Uh, and it'll do that by changing the tangs image ID. So we have to give each of these tags that we want to change a unique identifier. In addition, I'm going to create a new div tag called tangs name. And that'll just give the metadata of the name of the inscription. Um, so that'll go right below it. Uh, we'll apply sort of similar font styling as our subtitle, uh, just make it a little brighter, and then I'm showing you what it looks like with the default value, but we're going to get rid of that pretty shortly. So, okay, so I have the identifiers in the div tags, and here I'm going to take uh, the current image index, and whenever someone hits the left arrow key, we're just going to go backwards. So. We have to check here if the image index is zero, which basically means we're at the first, uh, first element. And if we're at the first element, then we actually want to go to the final element. But otherwise, we want to uh, go to index minus one. So if we're at seven, we want to go to six. Uh, but obviously, if we're at zero, we need to go all the way back to eight. And then I'm going to create a placeholder for a function called load image. I haven't defined it yet, but it's just going to be the function we use to update the image, and uh, also the title at right. OK. So now I'm going to implement the same thing for going forward. But here, instead of checking if we're at the start, I will check if we're at the end, and then go back to 0. So now to implement my load image function, the load image function is going to set up the src attribute for the tangs image. Uh, and it's just going to turn it into clay tangs, the ID that's there. Now you'll notice that if I hit this code, uh, it's it's actually not going to work uh, immediately because it only has the ID. It doesn't have slash content. Uh, you know, make sure that you are adding in slash content where you need it because that is uh, how the preview will determine where to slot it in. So you can see there's no slash content. Uh, I'm starting to realize that that's a bug. And so then I will go back down to that portion of the code uh, once I figure that out here in just a moment. And see, oh, there's the slash content up there. That's why it loaded at first. But now we need to add slash content here. All right. So slash content now is correctly loading. But the clicks are not working. Uh, I believe the issue here is because I don't have a cursor pointer, so I'm going to investigate that. Um, but that doesn't work. So now I'm trying out my second. Oh, no. There we go. Let's see. So cursor pointer. I'm going to try to make it so that you're not selecting the text, so that you're actually clicking it. But nope, that doesn't help either. Um, so the nice thing about this tool is that if you're having issues, because we're using an iframe at the right, what you can do for JavaScript is you can actually open the Chrome Developer Console. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, it's up top in your Tools Developer Developer Console. 
and you can start to look um, using things like console.log statements or stack traces to see what's going on with your code. So here, I don't really understand why it's not working when I hit forward, so I just wanna make sure that we're setting the image index correctly. Um, and so then I click it again, and oh, I see the stack trace. It's actually negative one. So it looks like the go forward is actually trying to go backward. So how could that happen? I'm gonna check my code again. And sure enough, on the far right side, when I scroll over, it's minus one, not plus one. So I'm gonna change that, and then just like that now, we have the forward, uh, we have the back buttons. It all seems to be working well and updating the metadata. So um, what I'm gonna show you here is then I'm gonna show you the, the ability to order and inscribe. Um, I picked block 78 as the SAT, and you can see it's a huge amount of money. Um, it's a very rare SAT. So for now, just for the demo, so I don't go broke, I'm gonna pick a random SAT. Uh, and the random SAT using the orders bot API will just generate an order to send to um, an address at, uh, at ordinals bot but I'm just gonna copy and paste it into Unisat. You can use order node, or excuse me, open node, you can use Unisat, you can use Xverse, you can use anything you want, um, just a single transaction. And then you're gonna hit next, uh, you're gonna sign and send it, and uh, that will send it over to Ordinal's bot who will then fulfill it for you. Now mine took about 10 minutes, but through the uh, magic of video editing, uh, I'm gonna skip ahead quickly here, and you will see Voila. So that is the inscription. It's now in my wallet. And uh, if I were to go to ord.io, I would see all the same sort of interactivity I just programmed. So hope that demo helped. Thank you so much for watching this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on Twitter or Discord.